Is this a lady in white? <laughs> yes. I'm going to tell everyone about this story in white. Good night, guys. Welcome, Tamara. But before we tell the story, listen to this, because we have to welcome you a particular way in Money Matters. All right? Money Matters show. Okay, no problem. <laughs> You heard that song? Yes, Superwoman. Thank you. <laughs> Produced by Lisa Classic, right? All the way in Tanzania. Awesome. But we spread That's all around awesome. the globe. Yes, we spread and we, we, we could not find another another way to bring on the lady in white. Superwoman. <laughs> well, not much of my white showing. I'm kind of cut off. <laughs> no, man, I'm seeing enough and they can see enough. Welcome, guys. Okay. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Tamara will have to welcome some of the persons from her side. But welcome to another Money Matters Monday show. And Tamara, I have been seeing you for quite a while. Years. No, I should not say years. But I've been seeing you for quite a while. From you were a teenager. And now you come full circle. So let Money yes, Matters... No, no. No, I'm a no, I'm a big lady. <laughs> no, you're a big lady. No, you're a big lady. So I, I am very excited now to be speaking with you and for what you have to share to some young entrepreneurs. I can't wait. So, who is Tamara? Thank you so much for the invite, Delroy. I really appreciate it. And good job on the program. As you, you mentioned, I like to describe myself as a tenacious millennial. And somebody who just loves media, love television. I've been doing that, as you mentioned, from as a teenager, because I started at 19 years old. And that's like, not to age myself, but that's like 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and I, I love media, but I've always desired to use it as a tool for inspiration and hope. And I've tried my best throughout my career so far to embody that at the various entities and media houses that I've worked with and so forth. And that's just me. I just have a passion for life. I believe that we all have a purpose here on earth, whatever the capacity is. And so I believe that everyone should just work hard at whatever they believe that their purpose is. And we all have a part to play. So I believe that you shining you know, or somebody else shining shouldn't take away. You shouldn't feel threatened by that. You should actually feel empowered and inspired by that so that you can also shine because we all have a part to play. Just like how the body is, like the body parts have different roles to play. So all of us have a purpose here on earth. So that's me in a nutshell. So inspiration and hope. And, inspiration and, and, and hope and using the channel of media to do that. So... For those who may not know, I started out, and I like to put things in context because I've not done local TV in quite a while. But when I started out my journey, I started out at CVM TV in a competition called The Anchor. And I was the youngest person in that competition. I was actually in my first year at Karimak at UWE as a student. And I ended up winning that competition. And I started out from no. that. Like, no, 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 no. You set that competition alight. Everybody was cheering you on. Every single because the confidence was just was just out of this world. And we said, Thank you so much. Winner. There goes a winner. So you have been trapped. You have been trapped from then. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I've as you mentioned that because like literally last week, Thursday was it? Or was it Friday? Well, last week. I was doing a freelance TV show with Business Access TV. And so I was doing the links in New Kingston. And mm -hmm. a lady, like not even just a lady, like several people came up to me like, we remember you from the anchor. And I'm like, oh my God, that's like 10 years ago. But that's you're good. right. It really yeah. has set that foundation for me. So I started out with that. I was still, I was like my earlier years, I was still in university, like for the entire three, four years while doing television then i used to work with owen james i don't remember yeah. owen james used to have a business show yes. exactly so i used to i used to host the achievers segment of that show and produce it 
And that's, again, it's, it's inspirational, but it's also featuring business leaders and other successful persons. So again, that fell right in. I was freelancing while I was still a student. I didn't start working full-time in media until when I was at JIS, because that's by then I'd left university. And I was at JIS for like three years as a TV presenter. I used to like read the news and also sometimes present the Jamaica Magazine program. And I did that for yeah three years. And then I was head hunted by Sportsmax. That's a cable company. I don't know how many sports persons are here. Yeah, quite so a bit I, of money matters fans. Okay, great. So yes, yeah, so Sportsmax is a well-known cable company and it's it showcases not only in Jamaica but right across the Caribbean region. Yeah. Yeah. But they yeah. have a, a news, they have a sister station called Steen. And Steen has Steen Caribbean News that broadcasts to like the United States and Canada and parts of the UK. And I was head on to it. One day I just got a call, had a meeting, and they wanted me to head up the news team. And I was like, what? Because I was like 25 going on 26. That was like, what, four years ago or something like that? Yeah. And I was like, what? So I am the type of person I've always taken risks. I believe that what is life without taking risks. And, you know, so I said, sure. And I did it. And I was there for like almost three years. I used to uh, be in charge of the news team as the executive producer. I used to also co I used to anchor the nightly news, the main news anchor. I used to also present on Sports Mag Zone uh, occasionally as a sports presenter. Mm -hmm. And I used to also, uh, there was a current affairs show called The Conversation that I started with my executive producer at the time as well, uh, George Davis. So he has, uh, you probably know of George. He's the head of the Press Association of Jamaica. So we started that current affairs show and just, you know, and I was doing that and until like a year and a half ago, almost actually almost two years now, I decided to again take another leap of faith and I went into another role as a communication specialist. And I've been doing that plus doing freelance television and freelance media. And then, of course, I can't not mention my program, The Trailblazers. Trailblazers. Hold on. I don't want you to go so fast. There's a lot of persons, young, who probably want to get into media. They're excited about your journey. But you mentioned Owen James, right? And I'm going to bring you back. Owen James usually do quite a bit of programs on the money, the business thing. And... He came to Barita and he did a program with our chairman, yeah. then Mrs. Lewin, because I used to be at Barita. And I was supposed <laughs> to be in a little clip, very short little clip. And I watched that night and I watched that night. And to this day, I have not seen myself. So I do remember Owen James. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but, I was um, telling him. No, 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 that's fine. <laughs> but it, I am saying, I. I <laughs> Yeah, you know, you come to the to the investment house and you ask one and two things and you say, Oh yeah, I'm going to be on TV. But my yeah. I wasn't gonna be. <laughs> That's production life for you, trust me. Like sometimes <laughs> you go to events and the cameraman shoots some footage and then it may be like a short story and you don't use it. So don't feel no way. I'm sure it wasn't meant in any way. <laughs> no, so I, I'm just I'm just I'm just saying so I, I do remember. Good old Owen, yeah, for sure. Yeah, nice guy. I, I, <laughs> yeah. So um, you moved to Trailblazer now is one of your income stream. I, I... Yes, so Trailblazers is my baby. I call it that. I've. Yeah. It's a web series. It's called The Trailblazers with Tamara McHale TV show. And it's currently um, on YouTube pretty much. And it is a weekly inspirational program where... I and personal development as well. So I feature persons right across the globe who are at the top of their careers or just some really inspirational figures who have gone through like immense, you know, tragedies, but they have managed to like overcome. And again, it falls in line with what I've always wanted to do to use media as a tool of inspiration and hope. And that's partially because I should mention my inspirations from as a little girl, Oprah Winfrey and the late Ian Boyne, because Mr. Boyne actually was a, a mentor of mine, and he had interviewed me on profile when I was 19 years old, and he always said I was, like, the youngest guest on the program, or one of Love the youngest guests. 
Definitely so, one of the youngest. Yes, so for so I've always admired him locally and then internationally, of course, Oprah Winfrey. So the Trailblazers was always something I always wanted to do. As a matter of fact, I had the, the pilot for that program from as early as like 2013, 20, you know, 12 there about back, back when I was like a student. Student. But it was a different name. Like me, I think I had like different names for it. And the idea was always to go television initially with it. So over the years, I kind of just toyed with it. I was supposed to shoot a pilot a long time ago. And then I kind of, you know, it didn't happen. And I, it was just gnawing at me again, like maybe two years ago, actually. I have a good relationship with NCB because I'm a former NCB Foundation All-Island Scholar. So over the years, I've had a good relationship with the different CEOs of the foundation and so forth. And the current CEO for the foundation, Nadine Matthews, there, she's also the head of like communications and so forth. And I reached out to her and I was like, hey, Nadine, I have an idea that I want to pitch to you. Can I have a meeting with you? And she was like, okay, sure. So we you know, she invited me to come to her office at the atrium. I went. I thought I was just going to meet with her alone. When I went, she had her entire team. I was like, what? Like, where are all of these people? Because I was just, like, thinking, I'm just pitching a little idea just to her. So I went. And, um, yeah, I went. And they looked at what I was, you know, presented. And they said, okay, Tamara, this is a good idea. But hear what? I was, as, as I said, my idea was for television. And they yeah. said, based on how the trends are and everything right now, we think you should put this, go for online. Go for online. Um, that is where, you know, you know that's, that's more affordable. And on top of it, you can actually gauge the response and see how people respond to the program first. And I was like, you know, that's a good idea. At, at first, I was a little bit sad because I was like... I wanted to go to TV straight and here they're telling me to go online. The dream. And you then, see the dream. Yeah, exactly. So then I was like, but I listened. I didn't start like shooting right away because I, again, I had this grandiose initial plan. And not to say I'm not going to do that eventually, but my grandiose plan was like big sets and everything, big crew, everything. And I actually did the pilot like that because I have an arrangement with Pegasus, Jamaica Pegasus Hotel. And I must big them up because from day one, the former manager, uh, Mr. Hillary, and now the current manager, Mr. Zayvon Yeralian, and also Miss Prudence Simpson, the sales manager. And there was a former uh, manager as well, uh, Lorraine. I don't remember Lorraine's last name. They were just on board. They allowed me to use the space free of cost. All I did was just give them credit. So I did like a pilot episode like that. And then, you know, I, I, I realized that, you know, when the COVID pandemic started, I was like, okay, a lot of people didn't always want to come out, especially mm -hmm. when we're under lockdown. And then I realized all of the international shows were going online with their programs. So I was like, you know what, let me pivot. And instead of always going on this, you know, big set, just do it virtually. And then I started doing it virtually. And I still do in-person episodes, but it's not like, it's not a must. So like sometimes I do in person when I, when I want to, but it's not like, oh, I, if I don't do it in person, I feel away anymore. So changing times. yeah. Changing times, changing times. Yeah. And you have to manage the expectations. That's what you're saying to persons who want to get, get ahead, get going. Because that's what entrepreneurship yeah. is about, you know. You have a grand idea, but when reality hits, you want to open the biggest yeah. shop, the biggest clothing store. But when reality hit, you have to start from the back of your car. Exactly. Yeah, you have. But the important thing, you know what you just said? You have to start. Whether you start at the back of your car, whether you start selling on the roadside, you have to start. Because if you sit there and wait, like if I sat there and wait on like, oh my God, I want this big grandiose thing and I'm not getting it and so I'm not going to do it, then I would have never started. But in starting, you realize, and I'm so glad that I started because 
I'm not going to lie, I was never a big editor. Like my forte is being on camera and presenting and also being behind the scenes and producing. Editing was not like something that I really did. I, pro I probably edited once, one something once and it took me like one entire day. But really? in pivoting, I literally taught myself how to edit. Thank God for the University of YouTube. And I actually enjoy editing now and creating new tricks. And mind you, when I do like certain in-person episodes or if it's a sponsored episode, I will use what I would consider a more professional editor and a professional crew. But the fact is, I know how to do it. I can help myself out. King Frit, King Frit look like he's coming from your side. I know him enough, but I won't say anything. And he's saying sharing is key. And that's a guy that knows how to, how to share for, for, for sure. Yes, he said, and he said starting, yeah, actually, yes, you're right. Starting is speaking for it. I agree. Because if you sit there and wait, nothing will ever happen. You just have to go out there and step out. And as a matter of fact, King Frit is starting a development. Welcome, sir. He's starting the development that I, I am sure chances are you and I might can buy a piece of a piece into it because of the rate of how you are going. Right? Uh, I receive that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, all right. So, guys, remember, it is a Money Matters program where you just need to say what is it that you want, what more you want tomorrow to be saying to you, what you want me to be saying to you. Give us, you know, just, just any questions. We are here to answer. You get us live and direct. You might not see us again for a while. So, you get us live and direct. Um, one other thing I want to point out during this pandemic, is it less work for you or more work? And yes, I know Prudence, you know, she's my friend at the Pegasus as well. So I bigger her awesome. up. Awesome. She's always accommodated. <laughs> yes. Yeah, man, Miss Simpson, Simpson is a wonderful soul. Um, you know, the interesting thing, uh, and you're actually, you asked a very good question, but it's actually been more, surprisingly. I was... Uh, I was kind of like taken aback, but I was like, Lord, I have to give you thanks. But surprisingly, in the midst of the pandemic, I don't know if it's because of the trailblazers and maybe, again, because I was not doing local TV for a while. So sometimes people, like I've had people say, I thought you were abroad or I thought you were away. So maybe they kind of forgot or they didn't really remember your skill sets or stuff. But once the visibility was out there again, like I started, I've... I still, I mean, I have my nine to five jobs. So I have to make proper arrangements yeah. and, you know, make sure that doesn't conflict with like my work schedule because that comes first. But then I'm, I was involved in like, you know, I've been doing like freelance television, more than one media house, uh, doing the trailblazers gigs. Some of them are sponsored. Some of them are my regular programs and doing other things like voiceovers, you know, preparing nope. for a short film all of those different things so it's interesting but in the and I've, I've done like even mc for events and do it virtually right here at home like the the organizers just gave me their banner to put in the background and i hosted the event for them so it's interesting but you can even in a pandemic uh you know launch forward well you, you know i am happy i have you live and direct telling the world that the pandemic don't mean that we're gone in reverse because every entrepreneur that i've had on this program during this pandemic they are doing better than before the pandemic seriously they have pivot they have done i have um sean from jamata extras he came on and he's making three times sales so it just goes wow. to and i have counted six different areas that you are earning from publicist Motivational speaker, communication specialist, event host, TV presenter, anchor. Don't, don't call all of them out. I don't want them thinking, say, I'm, I'm Michael Leachin and come out. <laughs> no, but, no, but, but this goes to show that when you diversify yourself, it doesn't matter yes. as long as you're doing it within your passion. The, the, yes. the earning potential is unlimited. That is so true. I was literally even uh, discussing with a friend of mine. It was last week because from when I've been told, oh, Tamara, your skills are like so good. You need to just have a Fiverr account. I do have a Fiverr account. It's just that I've not been active. And I said, you know what? I've been doing like voiceovers like because I'm a part of this talent agency. So 
they will reach out to me like to do voiceovers maybe for you know a commercial or whatever it is and as i said i do my freelance television like earlier tonight i did news i'm still in the yeah. same outfit um yeah. so i do all of these different things but i mean just even a, a space like fiverr which is open to all anybody can join fiverr if you have a skill set you don't have to like for example me i may have a contact with a different media host that reach out to me but you can just go on fiverr and sign up like for example me i'm good at presenting or voice over skills or whatever then you know i offer that service and i charge a fee and you pay me to do that or other persons can do something else that they like whether it's graphics or design or whatever it is well so on, i feel like the on, world hold on, hold on hold on you need to repeat some of the ways that some of the persons on this live or will watch it another time can earn and this is the important thing of money matters it find ways and means that entrepreneurs can share with other persons how you make it the different ways because ven posh ven is the motivator welcome she is starting a program where she's teaching instagram persons how to maximize and earn from their instagram so go right ahead you have to repeat repeat okay so as i mentioned because obviously i'm going to come from a, a media standpoint because that's what yeah. i do right so as i said as i do my 95 but then i freelance so i do freelance television as a presenter and use anchor and i also uh do other things i'm a part of a talent agency i do voiceovers for commercials or clients will reach out to me separately from that agency like you know say okay and i have you 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 work out whatever rate is best for you check out the market rates and then you establish a reasonable price range if you're just starting out it may you know it may not be too high if you're just starting out when you once you've established yourself so you have those different ways and that's with like you know physical media houses but separate from that i'm mentioning that online has so many platforms just go on like a, a site like fiverr and you can if you're good at voice over you can sign up to be a, a voice over person and you sell your services persons charge you whatever rate i've seen like persons on fiverr like they're charging like 250 us maybe for a session then you have a regular rate would maybe be like a 25 dollars but if it's a 25 dollars and you get say you get you know five requests in a day that's a whole, or i mean 125 dollars right so you little have different adult. ways if you're good. Little exactly adult. It adds up, and if it's graphics, you know. So I feel like there are so many opportunities and ways online for you to earn, and you literally and just use up the university of YouTube. I mean, I have a YouTube channel. Fortunately, my channel is monetized, but even though my channel is monetized, it's still a small channel because I've just, as, as I said, my program is like almost a year old now, right? So it's steadily growing. But I'm not at the stage where I can have a 500,000 subscribers or 100,000 where you are earning like a whole heap of money. That's another route. But then you also have things like affiliate markets where you can use sites like Amazon and you may not even be a monetized channel, but you're still earning. So like literally there are today while I was driving, I was listening to a webinar and that was talking about faceless YouTube channels. And this and like this guy, like not even just this guy, several persons were on it and sure they're making like like five thousand US dollars a month from faceless YouTube. Where you're not even it's not like my channel where you you know you have to do a lot of editing and you're seeing my face. Faceless YouTube is just like okay, you put up an inspirational video or it's a business video or whatever. Like you can go you can Google it or YouTube it. Okay. And these guys are earning a lot and all they're doing is just following a set script. But I was listening to that today and I was like, I was driving and I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to start another channel, a faceless YouTube. You don't even have to know that I'm the person behind it, but I want to be making some more money from that. So really and truly don't in these me. times. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. I need to start making some money from YouTube. Don't leave me. Yes, money so matters. Money matters. Don't leave me. Exactly. So the truth is you don't have to feel like, because sometimes people feel like they're not an established name or an established brand. And so that they can't earn but there are guys and there are people out there who are making tons of money and there are no celebrities they have just figured out the formula and the formula is there if you youtube it or google it ways to earn online 
a faceless YouTube, as I said, is a popular one now. You can really set yourself up. Guys, every, you're hearing again the various ways in which entrepreneurs can step out. Times has changed. It's an online market space, right? Um, B Pro is asking, when are you going to start that program? I'm not sure which B Pro, which program? Come back to us. Which I'm not sure which of the program. Remember, Tamara is in many things, you know. What you want her to host an event for you? Which of them? You know, I actually yeah. tried to get I actually tried to get Tamara to host um a annual staff virtual meeting in February and she was so tired. But here she is at Money Matters. Right, so well, I am well, grateful. I mean, yes, and the truth is, I am open because I also like I recently did like a public, a public speaking session, and I also did a public relations consultancy session. So, uh, you know, it's not only just like in TV and stuff. I also do public relations. I've done publicity. I think I've shared that on my platform for the former head of publicity for Steve Harvey, Elvira Guzman. She's in Los Angeles, but. I've yeah. done her publicity before and several other people. So, I mean, whatever you love to do, you can monetize it. Um, and as I said, for me, I'm going to admit that there was a point where I was, even though the fact that I'm like very bold and out there, but there was a point where I was still still trying to figure, figure out that sweet spot in a sense. And it's not perfected yet, but I feel like I'm way much better than where i was before okay training to, to manage to manage the instagram profile okay training to manage training and how to manage the instagram well, he's profile. offering he's offering that no no he wants training to manage his instagram profile i i think he was he's probably Sorry. referring to to ven the vent parts that I mentioned, that one. And yeah. But you would not believe it. It's two minutes to time. You have to give us some takeaways. You have to give us some takeaways. But as I said, the takeaways are very important for the... Let me ask a question. Apprenticeship. Is it something still alive that persons can do? Apprenticeship. Back in the days, you learn from Owen. You learn from Ian. Is there... Is there um, you, you know... I think it's still alive in the media landscape. I really do think so because one thing with me, I remember talking with Owen recently actually um, on Twitter. We were actually talking and he was saying that, you know, he really has to, you know, say thanks again to me because he's like very few, you know, sometimes people, they learn and they don't come back and they say thanks. Okay. And like, yes. And that's showing like gratitude to, you know, persons who have taught you. So I think it's important, but I, I still think it has a space in the media. I mean, we, we are in a society now, unfortunately, where sometimes everybody's like, you know, they feel like they're, they can do everything on their own. But I feel when you can learn from the, the stalwarts, and sometimes it's not even stalwarts in age, but just in experience. Experience. Because, experience matters. Yeah, because, experience yeah, matters. because when, when I was in charge of my newsroom at Scene Caribbean at Sportsmax and I was, I start, when I started that job, I, I had a small team of persons managing and I was probably the youngest, no, other than the interns, I was like the youngest person and here I was managing persons who were older than myself in a new team. And the truth is some, some people did not like that, but then that's part of the journey. But at the same time, I did have a good mentor uh, within that sphere, um, my exec at the time, George Davis, and he you know, gave me good oversight and stuff like that. So I really was grateful for that. And then, as I said, when I was at JIS, uh, Mr. Boyne, because I, I had times, especially as a young person in the industry, where people are not always nice. And I remember, like, you know, thinking I'm not good enough. Or I remember one time, like, there was a particular supervisor that, was it a supervisor? I don't even remember. But I don't remember her role. But a particular person who had an issue with something that I did. And I really felt like I wasn't good enough. And I remember Mr. Boyne called me up and he had a look at my work. And he was like, but Michael, you, you work good. You work excellent. I don't understand. So the truth is, you know, you, I believe that apprenticeship and learning from 
especially those who are stalwarts has really helped me and i still think that it's relevant because even me when i was in charge of my team my interns i gave them stuff to do i remember when i was leaving one of my youngest intern cuz by then i was like 20 like how long ago i left so i was that was like 2 years ago but as i said i started when i was 26 and and i left yes yeah, so my intern she was a utex student and i remember she was crying and said oh my god and you know that she learned so much and that meant that really meant a lot to me so i believe that even for the young people that are here or that will watch this after i'm encouraging you guys to really learn from those who have, you know who are ahead of you learn from those who have like you know blazed their trail in a sense because even with my program believe it or not when i'm interviewing a lot of these influential trailblazers across the globe i'm learning from them as well from myself because i'm like wow they went through all of that and they still made it and they're doing amazing things so i believe that you're never too young or too old to learn and to grow and, and you know what is funny i'm happy to have you co-hosting that you're not pumping questions that we at me and i'm happy for that I'm happy, I'm happy for that. I'm not in that chair. Yes, because I, I am telling you, the apprenticeship thing, it, it, it's like it, it died. And I think it, it's really important to bring, a, bring to it the next set, the next set of person, whether it's in carpentry, house, masonry, you know, media, whatever it is. I think, yeah, I think yeah. we put it aside for too, for too long. Yeah. You're definitely right about that because... Up to last week I called you supposed to know Paul and Porter Jones sure and and I called cuz I needed some advice about you know something and I called Paula because back when I was a US student Paula was I was introduced to Paula uh, by an older person and Paula became a mentor to me and so like up to this day like so I called her last week cuz I needed some advice and I was like hey you know whatever whatever and we spoke and that's the kind of with relationship it's good to have you know persons who have already established themselves and me yes i've established myself to a certain extent but i i still have my own journey to take and so those coming up i believe it's good when you can emulate and also reach out to other persons because sometimes we feel fearful that if we reach out to them they might say no and the truth is sometimes they're busy they may not be able to be over you all the time but sometimes just send a message and ask for advice and whenever they can respond they'll respond you know don't be fearful you know you know i Ooh. still have my mentor from back in the bank and i mentor final years finance students at utec and i have been, i've been doing it for quite a while and they still reach out to me to this day so mentorship apprenticeship it don't it, it, it will never die we just have to maximize and and and, and embrace it embrace it yeah I I Definitely. I I have I have the takeaways um every little add up maximize the channel um learn from those who are ahead of you in a parting words because I cannot oh, well, believe for 30 minutes I, you, you, you can't believe I talk a lot you know that's why I'm in this profession <laughs> If I was not no I'm telling you if I was if I was not in media I would as a matter of fact when I was smaller they used to tell me that I should be a lawyer because I talk a lot. Well, um well. I, 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 yes and that's why I make sure that I do things where I'm using my voice and use up my talking. But yeah honestly was... welcome Stacy Stacy <laughs> you coming when we are leaving Stacy was a former co-host quite a bit of our co-host of former guest co-host of Jai Yes, yes, Tamara. I need to yes, to wrap up some takeaways for those okay. young bubbling persons, those you know, entrepreneurs who want to come up, come to the media because, as I said, you have quite a bit of earning streams and you have gotten better since COVID. And I am happy. I'm I'm really happy because this program actually started during COVID. That's how Money Matters came about because persons were just you know not sure of what to do. So we are we are trying to. Do, do something in the education space as far as yeah. finance is concerned that's pretty much what we are doing and we have been getting a good a good a, a good a good feedback so we are working on it 
I remember when we started doing COVID because that's when I really started, you know, the Trailblazers. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate what you're doing. I mean, I feel like, again, when I mentioned earlier that there is a space for everyone, I feel like sometimes we may look on and see other persons doing something that we always wanted to do or that we want to do. And we feel like there's not a space for us. But the truth is that there is a space. If you look at, when you go on, when you turn on your TV or you turn on your cable, like there is a million channels and a million, and within those channels, there are a million programs. So the truth is like, you have a choice. When you go on Netflix, when you go on Amazon Prime, millions of series, millions. So it's like, just to find your niche. So whatever it is that you are passionate about and you love doing, I would always tell you that focus on that because once you focus on what you love to do, then I believe that you are more, you're, you're, naturally, you're naturally going to love it. And so even when the hard work comes and it's not going to, yes, there will times where you feel stressed out, but you're going to be focused on it more because you love it and you're passionate about it. And so it will be worth it for you as opposed to just doing something that you're not, you don't love, right? And then also find ways to now monetize what you love doing. So because especially I'm on a, the Money Matters program, I have to make sure that I emphasize that, you know, know your Money Matters program, because at the end of the day, yes, you love it, but, you know, especially in a pandemic, you have your bills to pay, you know, you're, you're saving up towards your goal, maybe you want to buy a house or a new car or whatever, you may have a family to, you know, all of those different things. So it's also important that, and, and remember that's, it's not going to be easy. I'm, I posted this quote on the weekend when I, you know, something on my IG and, it, and I said, it's hard, but it's worth it, right? If you really love it, just push through. And I will go back to the comment that I started with. I think I would like to end with that. The important thing is to start. It's to start. So, yes, it's to start. So don't wait for a pie in the sky day. Don't wait for... You know, to, you know, sit down and wait for manna to fall from the sky. Because manna will fall, but you still have to start. <laughs> so, just and start you know, whatever you want to do. And you know, Stacey, Stacey is here. She was one of our guest co-hosts. And that was one of her favorite words. Just start. Just start. Really awesome, Stacey. Good advice. Good just advice. Start. Yes. Just start. Whatever. So, even I'm in the media profession, so I I've talked to persons who are also within the sphere. And the truth is, I'm going to be honest, you know, being on television alone in Jamaica, don't pay a bag of money. Um, unless maybe you're like really, 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 really established. And which is why you find a lot of like the broadcasters, they, they do other things. They MC, they freelance, they do other things. Multiple right? income, um, Multiple income exactly. gives you a big basket. That, that, that's pretty and, much it exactly the important thing is to ensure that you have multiple sources of income because at the end of the day even the very good book the bible said it cast your what, what is it cast your bread upon many waters something to that effect so the truth <laughs> is god himself telling you say you need to make sure say you have diversify. different ways to earn and diversify well look here i don't want jessica to get jealous because jessica is saying she have that statement too right um, I use that phrase too. So yes, Jessica, we leave out nobody and money matters. Every <laughs> single program money matters is pretty important to the growth of the program because we have had a successful one year. So that's how we start. Just start. Choo, choo, choo. Um, Melissa yeah. Harris, welcome. Guys, the program, it ends. Finish, finish, finish. Jesse Gibbs and Decor said it. That's how we started. Hey, Jesse, gift and decor. <laughs> I don't know if it's Jerome yeah. or Kitty to this. They're behind the company. And they're, they're an amazing company, by the way. I okay. just like shout out to them. Oh, and how can I go? Before we go, guys, please go to my YouTube channel, The Trailblazers with Tamara McHale. It's on YouTube. If you go to my IG right now, it's, the link to the channel is in my bio. And subscribe. I have a lot of amazing episodes. You can go far back as uh, interviews that I've done with Gary Butch Hendrickson. Uh, a lot of 
you know, influential yeah, persons yeah, locally yeah, and internationally. Yeah. So, oh, Chris Williams from Proven, that was a very good episode. A lot of people loved that one. So, really you have a, whatever your, your, you know, who, who you like, you can go through the content and, you know, listen and learn. It's, it's a very good avenue to listen, learn, but also be inspired and hear how these people made it. Because the truth is, I feel like sometimes when I'm feeling down and I'm listening to, this morning I was listening to uh, the rapper Eve. <laughs> And it was about her story. And that's a back in the days rap or Eve. But she but I to me was just I just and then I was listening to something about how Denzel Washington and I was just like doing my work but just hearing and it's always good when you see these people or sometimes even Steve Harvey will share bits of his story online. But when you hear their story and then you're like, they're regular people, they 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 struggle regular through people. it just like us. Regular but you know people. what? Yeah, but you know what? They never gave up. So yeah, it's yeah. good when you can be inspired by other people because it gives you that motivation and that drive to continue even when you're going through your own situation. That's in a nutshell what Money Matters is all about with guest co-host tonight, Tamara Mackey. The wonderful Thank baby you. grown up now in the media, <laughs> multiple streams of income, having it much better than before COVID. So it just goes to show do not fold your hand and say, I give up. Go for it. Money Go matters. for it, indeed. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thanks to all who joined. I'm sorry that I can't believe the time finished already. We should do a part two another time. <laughs> I, we will definitely. I, it's not a joke. Because when you put out that book, I want it to be premiere on this program, on this show. Oh my God, I claim that. I've been told to write a book from when and maybe this is confirmation. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've been tracking it for too long. All right? All right. Yes, the little girl, the little girl is turning into a woman now. All right, I'll, I'll work on that book. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks for making it Money Matters Monday, guys. The show Thank that you, you have been... Yes. Remember, follow tomorrow at the trailblazers good material is there for you i follow i follow it too and if i'm following it you can follow too catch you bye guys thank you okay all right